When you think of the flamingo, you think of an elegant, vibrantly colored bird, usually poised on one leg. But have you ever wondered where they got those pretty pink and red colored feathers from? You probably thought it was hereditary. Well, it isn't. Flamingos actually aren't born with those vibrant colors. They're born with a dull gray color. So if the trait's not hereditary, where'd they get it? Stay tuned till the end as we expose what's really going on with these pink giraffe-like oversized chickens. Flamingos are quite unique, and not just in color. They're tall, long-legged wading birds, but they have a deceiving optical illusion about those legs. You see, they don't actually have knees that bend backwards. To the naked eye, it sure looks like it does, but that's not actually their knee joint. That's their ankle. A flamingo's knee is located further up on the leg, hidden under their feathers. Confused? Well, just think of a flamingo as standing on their tiptoe. When the leg bends, it's actually the ankle you see hinging. These birds attain their sexual maturity at about six years of age, and they have a wild dancing ritual to attract a spouse. They pack together in groups, sometimes marching in unison to elaborate dance moves. They raise their heads upright with a very straight neck, moving their heads from side to side. They twist and preen, bow down with tail feathers to the sky and poke out one wing, or they spread both wings to expose the pink and black feathers beneath, all to attract a mate. A single flamingo is not a happy flamingo, so they rinse and repeat these strange dance rituals in hopes that their efforts aren't futile. As the mating season progresses, the flamingos improve their dancing with more transitions and varied movements. The most successful ones are those with the most versatile and unique moves. Flamingos are serially monogamous. If lucky to land a mate, the spouses are often faithful to each other for a year before they get divorced and go in search of a new partner for the following year. Considering their height and gangly appendages, it's hard to imagine a flamingo can actually fly, but they can. Their pre-flight procedure resembles that of an airplane. They need to gather speed before taking flight. A flamingo will begin takeoff by running at full speed and rapidly flapping their wings. It's not the most graceful, but it gets the job done. Once in flight, flamingos fly with their head and neck stretched out in front and their legs trailing behind, maximizing their aerodynamic efficiency and conserving energy by soaring. When stationary, flamingos can stand on one foot for long periods, even long enough to fall asleep. But why do they perform this balancing act? There's a few reasons for this. One is that it minimizes muscle power used. By standing and locking one leg in place, it's less tiring as it requires zero effort to stand. The other is that it helps keep them warm. Flamingos lose heat through their limbs, much like other birds. By tucking one leg tightly against their body, they can limit the amount of heat that escapes through their legs. In terms of habitation, flamingo birds are extraordinary. Over the years of the existence of these birds, they've evolved and adapted to live in extreme and highly toxic environments, like the caustic soda lakes, hypersaline lagoons, or high-altitude salt flats. One of such unexpected places is Africa's Great Rift Valley, which hosts many microscopic blue-green algae called cyanobacteria. This algae produces poisonous chemicals capable of fatally damaging most animal cells, liver, and nervous system. But guess what? These extreme wetlands are no match for a flamingo. They can consume many of the algae present without experiencing any ill side effects. Lake Natrone in Tanzania and the toxic Lake Bogoria in Kenya can strip the human skin bare, and many animals perish in these toxic salty waters, but not flamingos. They thrive in this environment, all thanks to their especially tough skin and scale on their legs that can prevent them from getting burnt. These toxic waters also provide a safe haven from predators, allowing them to raise their young in mud nests surrounded by a caustic moat. Have you ever seen a flamingo eat? Did you ever notice they eat with their head upside down? Flamingos are filter feeders. They actually filter their food, much like filter feeding whales in the ocean. They feed on algae, small seeds, tiny crustaceans such as brine shrimp, fly larvae, and other plants and animals that live in shallow waters. To eat, a flamingo will place its head upside down in the water with its bill pointed at its feet and use its tongue to pump water in and out of its bill. The comb-like plates along the edge of the bill create a filter for water to rush out while trapping food inside. Surprisingly, flamingos can drink water at near boiling point and collect fresh water from springs and geysers at lake edges. In the absence of fresh water, they can efficiently utilize the glands in their head to get rid of excess salt present in water to make it safe for their consumption. Now let's talk about the origin of the bright colors we see on flamingos. The common phrase, you are what you eat, is 100% applicable to flamingos. 
Their diet is basically what gives the color you see on the skin and feathers. But how? The color of their plumage is derived from the beta carotene, a red-orange pigment present in the food they consume. Flamingos almost exclusively feed on algae, larvae, and brine shrimp. These are highly pigmented with red and orange colors called carotenoids. After feasting on these pigmented foods, the enzymes in their digestive system break down the carotenoids into pigments absorbed by fats in the liver. The absorbed pigments are then deposited into the skin and feathers of these birds to give the bright colors you see. Each shade of color found on the birds depends on the food they consume and the environment around. Those inhabiting areas filled with foods rich in carotenoids tend to have a darker and brighter shade of color than those with less abundance of such food. Some of these birds have darker shades of pink, while some have tints of orange and red, but some of these birds can be white. This indicates that such birds consume minimal amounts of carotenoid-filled foods. And now you know. We'll see you next time.